In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This week we look at the first week of May, and I'll have a link, will be a link for the video last year on the first week of May, which highlights some interesting, probably not very well-known feast days. This week, uh, this year, I'm going to focus um, just on uh, May 2nd, uh, I'm sorry, uh, May, uh, May, May 1st, the Feast of St. Joseph. Um, the worker, and also um, the month being dedicated to Our Lady. Um, so as far as the uh, Feast of St. Joseph, last year it fell on a Sunday and was only celebrated on the traditional calendar. This year it's celebrated um, on Monday and will be on both calendars. And I have a little link to an article about it. Uh, but essentially it is, it was um, Pope uh, Pius XII chose that particular day um, because it was already um, it was already a day um, dedicated to workers, but to give it a, a true, a, a true um, sense of the dignity of workers, and not the communist May Day propaganda and evil ideology. And so, um, the Church wants us to see Saint Joseph as the model for all workers of any any kind, but especially those who work with their hands, and certainly the, uh, those who are carpenters. And but to be to recognize the dignity uh, of work and to be be able to sanctify. So uh, I mean I, I don't really know of any specific traditions in celebrating the day, but certainly um, doing something, working something, with, doing some type of work with your hands would be a, obviously a great way to honor um, Saint Joseph and be um, uh, assisted by his uh, intercession. As far as May being the month of the Blessed Virgin, I did talk about it somewhat last year, but I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth this year. And I have a, a quote uh, first from St. John Henry Newman as to why uh, May is a fitting time for to be uh, dedicated to Our Lady. He says, The first reason is because it is a time when the earth bursts forth into the fresh foliage and its green grass after the stern frost and snow of winter, and the raw atmosphere and the wild uh, wind and rain of the early spring. It is because the blossoms are upon the trees and the flowers are in the gardens. It is because the, the days have got long and the sun rises early and sets late. For such gladness and joyousness of eternal, external nature, it is a fit uh, a attendant of our devotion to her who is the mystical rose in the house of gold. Those are two titles given to Our Lady in um, and the litany of Loretto. Uh, and he also points out that even in those times when you have still some rain, it may sometimes be cool in May, that it still, it still is a month that promises hope and preparing for summer and that, uh, that Our Lady reflects the light of Christ. Uh, and a more extensive article, which I'll link for uh, on the month of May, mentions how this month, how this devotion began, especially in the in the 13th century, that the the, the custom of dedicating month month of May to Our Lady, and then especially accelerated. I think I spoke about last year around the year 1700, in the Roman College in in uh, in Italy, and but it was in the 19th century that Pius the uh, Pius the seventh, a little over 200 years ago granted some indulgences for observing it this way, and then even more so extended by Blessed Pius IX later in the century. And then, uh, moreover, the, uh, in the encyclical by Pius XII in the 20th century, he, um, Mediator Day, he especially spoke about the importance of this devotion. He says, other exercises of piety, which although not strictly belong to the sacred liturgy, are nevertheless of special importance and dignity may be considered to be a certain way to be in addition to liturgical and then approved and praised over and over again by the apostolic see and by the bishops referring to the month being dedicated, May being dedicated to Our Lady. Uh, in addition, uh, it's a fitting time, uh, especially to focus on, on the aspect of what we're celebrating liturgically, which is pretty much always the Easter season and especially Our Lady, and then going to Pentecost, Our Lady with the Apostles and the uh, disciples in preparation for the Feast of Pentecost. And some, pot, some, some 
uh, particular devotions that are especially fitting, I already mentioned at the beginning of Easter, the Regina Celli, which is a beautiful hymn um, that uh, replaces the Angelus uh, and uh, celebrates Our Lady's joy at the resurrection. Of course, the Rosary, um, obviously intensifying devotion to Our Lady in the Rosary during May, as well as um, the various litanies, particularly the litany of Loretta, which I'll talk about a little bit more. And then uh, if you've never done the consecration, even preparing for the consecration to Our Lady, um, I, we do them here at the parish, but not everybody does all the preparation for that, which uh, especially the uh, the one reading the true devotion of St. Louis Marie de Montfort, as well as um, may, most have been enrolled in the scapular, but of course you can be enrolled in the brown scapular if you have never been, as well as um, if you have been enrolled, be sure to wear the brown scapular, or maybe you need a new scapular to, to, uh, to wear if yours is broken. And of course, the miraculous medal is especially um, wonderful devotion to be reminded about here. Um, as far as the litany of Loretto goes, um, uh, there, were many, there were many litanies uh, to Our Lady, but this one became the most popular one, and it's associated with our, our, the House of Loretto, which is the Holy House, which I talked about last year, and the, the miraculous move of the house uh, several times. And But this was especially, um, in the 16th century, was definitively approved and really kind of replaced the other uh, litanies. And it, uh, it's, it's composed of a fixed um, a plan common to uh, several Marian litanies for an existence up to the 15th century. And uh, because, because of the associated with the letter and all the pilgrims that went to Loretto, it became the sort of the litany of Our Lady, um, uh, placing the others, as I mentioned. And then I'll just mention a little bit, I mentioned it in passing last year, the having a garden uh, dedicated to the Blessed Mother. I, I really think it is a beautiful, a beautiful custom that actually goes back many, many centuries. Um, and we probably was more, was more uh, popular during the times when people spent more time gardening, but certainly it's a good, it's a wonderful thing to, to revive. And so there are different ways you can do this. Um, sometimes they'll have an enclosed garden with a, usually a stat, of course a statue of Our Lady and then have plants dedicated to Our Lady and other saints um, and obviously it's an ideal place for quiet devotion meditation uh, family rosaries and such and especially in the beautiful um, time of year when so much sun and light and uh, so the first garden appears to have come from a, an Irish saint from the seventh century Saint Fiacre um, hermit turned healer who planted a garden in honor of Our Lady and filled it with healing herbs. And um, so there are many things you can put in these gardens uh, uh, and many flowers even to represent and, and the plants to represent the various saints um, in addition to Our Lady and of course Saint Joseph especially um, the lily or the um, the Nostra Tuum, sorry for the poor pronunciation there. Uh, so it mentions here are some particular uh, flowers that are that are uh, fitting, obviously roses, and um, mentions here the Calendula, uh, which is uh, sometimes called the pot marigold, the Mary's, Mary's gold, deeply healing herb with beautiful bright gold flowers to bright up, brighten up the garden. The, the peony, which are called, sometimes called Pentecost roses, which often bloom, bloom around this Pentecost. The hawthorn, um, and uh, which is uh, sometimes called Mary's berries or hawthorn berries, are healing anti-anxiety, uh, addition to winter teas. And uh, the hawthorn tree symbolizes Christ's crown of thorns, the resurrection, and Mary's quiet uh, own quiet reflection, as St. Luke knows, keeping all of these things in her heart. And also the rosemary bush. Um, there's a tradition that our, that our Lady put her, hung her mantle on the rosemary bush on the road uh, during the exile uh, flight to Egypt. And uh, rosemary, um, so rosemary flowers are, are beautiful, uh, another beautiful addition to the garden. So there, there'll be some, there's, as I said, there'll be some links on all these things for different suggestions to especially make uh, 
the month of May, uh, a, a wonderful month dedicated to Our Lady and uh, one that um, will be um, a real blessing spiritually and uh, for the entire family. In the name of the Father and the Son, Holy Ghost, Amen. Ten minutes?